Hi everyone, so check this out. In today's video, I'll be doing this twisted tower. It's going to be a series of videos, but today we'll go over creating um, a circle here, a series of uh, heights here. We also go and subdivide it later, and we also are able to pick the, the angle of rotation. So if I went here to zero, that'll become a straight tower here. And if I go to, let's say, 15, we're rotating a little bit here. Now we're able to decrease the number of floors that we want here. We can increase it. We can also change the space in between floors and ultimately the overall size. So uh, like I said, it's the first part of a series of videos, but I'll have this for you to check out to get started with uh, creating architecture in Grasshopper. And we'll start by creating this twisted tower. Okay, so to start, we're gonna bring in a circle. And so we'll bring in this circle component here and give it a radius. So let's start with 120. And so our twisted tower is going to consist of twisting and rotating circles that are going to be put together to create that form. So we're going to start with this one. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do it slow. We're going to move this circle, which is going to be going into the geometry. In which direction? Well, we're going to go up in the Z direction and we want to go up, let's say, 60. So now we have the ability to increase or decrease this and increase the size there. So I'll go back. Now that we have this, what we're going to do is take this top one and rotate it. So I'll go ahead and rotate this circle. And I'm going to use for the plane, I'm actually going to use the geometry so that'll actually become the circle, the, the middle point here. And now the angle, well, first we'll right click here and go to degrees. And now I'll go from zero and then less than, I'll do 30. So I'll do from zero to 30 degrees that we're able to rotate. Now I'll plug this into the angle and we won't really have the ability to, we won't be able to see what's going on here unless we bring in a locked component, which will allow us to take that first one and then that top one, and then disable the preview here. And now let's rotate it around and see if it's working. So now we see that there is something going on here. And what we want to do is actually do this a series of times. So we don't want to just do one here. We want to do a lot of them and rotate them the same amount. So to do that, we're going to use the component called series, and that's going to allow us to do a series of movements in the Z direction and also allow us to do a series of rotations um, with whatever angle. So let's go ahead and double click here and bring in the series component. And this series component is going to allow us to do more than one number at a time. So right now it goes from zero to nine, giving us 10 numbers. And that's because it starts at zero. It steps by number of one, and we have a count of 10. So let's go ahead and decrease the count. And I'll double click and go to five. Now I have a count of five. Step, we're gonna say how much vertically. So we'll bring in that 60 here. And we're gonna start at zero. So what this will do is give us a series of motions in the Z direction. And so what this does is it'll just basically create five numbers. One, the first one is zero, the second one 60, and then it goes up by 60. So we'll go ahead and organize this here. And what we're going to do is also do a series of rotations using this angle. So I'll go ahead and double click here. I'll go to series plug in for the count, it's going to be the same count, the step, it's actually going to be the angle. And it's going to start at zero. So once we have this, we can plug in the series into the angle and see that we have basically this happening while as it rotates around. Now, with the count, we can always increase the number here. And with our step, we can increase our rotation angle. So what's going to be really neat about this is that once we disable this, we have the ability to take this form and now we can subdivide it. 
Okay, so now that we have the basic form here as loft, what we're going to do is subdivide it. Now, this is a pretty straightforward uh, cylinder. If we did want to play around with some of the sizes and some of the, like, adjust the top to be bigger or the, the bottom to be bigger, those type of things, uh, we're going to go over later on. For now, we're going to keep it simple um, and just do a series of rotations in a loft. And now what we'll do is subdivide it just as a surface um, to see what kind of results we get here. So I'll take that loft and I'll double click here and go to ISO trim. ISO trim is going to help us subdivide this loft into a bunch of different squares. So ISO trim usually comes in with divide domain squared. So we're plugging the segments into the domain, the loft into the domain here, and U and V are going to be 10 automatically. So we'll go to loft and plug that into the surface. And we'll see that we have a bunch of subdivisions here, but we do have some overlapping geometry. So let's go ahead and take this and let's decrease the number of subdivisions. Let's see here. And I'll make a copy here so we can have a separate one for the U and V. And now that we have the ISO trim surface, um, there's other things we can do like um, create a frame around it. So we'll take these, we'll go to um, the plugin called Lunchbox, then go to frame, panel frame. And we'll plug those in. Then I'll go to right click and disable preview. And they, there we'll see that we have it kind of this really crazy geometry here. So let's go to a custom preview. And then I'll bring in a swatch so we can see things a little bit better. So I'll plug in the frame here. And now I'll disable the preview on everything else just so we can see what we're working with here. So I'll go to rendered view. And sometimes it's a little too drastic and that's going to be our rotation. So if we ease up on that, it'll help us um, get to a point where it looks a little bit better. So, um, and we'll also increase the step here. So there we go, that's looking a little bit better. And now We'll also just increase the rotation to like 10. Um, actually, let's go to eight. Perfect. So what happens is when we get the frames, oh, it's actually a little too much still. Um, and that's causing some issues here. Um, let's see if that's fixed if we join the panels. So I'll go to join BREP and I'll plug in the BREPs here. And now we'll see that actually everything is clean now that we closed it off. Um, the other thing is that we also have the panels. So I'll go to panels and then I'll bring in a def different BREP component, plug in the panels into here, and I'll actually use two different colors. So this one will become the blue one so we can see that it's actually part of the opening. So with this, we have the beginning of a really cool twisted tower. And what's interesting is that we can actually continue this on uh, for a while here, right? And the more you increase here is going to allow you to do more of a rotation. So these can create some really cool forms. This is actually, um, I think you could take this and 3D print it. I'm not sure, I still have to test some of those things, but now that you see the beginning process of it, the next is gonna be to create floors inside and to also uh, make this not just one single um, size, but make it dynamic where this can change and the middle it can change and all those things. So let's go ahead and increase the size of it here. That's looking cool. And then we'll decrease the rotation 
and possibly increase the step here. Cool. So what I'll do is I'm going to clean this up, uh, export it, and um, I'll have the script and everything for you to check out. Uh, so please let me know if you have any questions or anything.